Danielle writes, I am a recent college graduate, 22, who lives a minimalistic lifestyle. I am a Christian and aspire to devote my life to service work in underserved populations, specifically global health. I am writing because I am having trouble finding and establishing silence and hearing both God's and my voice. Like many, I have various people, family, and friends chiming in and advising me on what to do and how to do it. To appease everyone and do something post-college, I returned to school. Unfortunately, I am in the process of accruing debt for another degree which makes me very uneasy. This is often met by bystanders' dismissal of my concern and reassurance that debt is the natural academic process. Even in the absence of verbal communication, the burden of academic and life expectations weigh heavy. Of course, right? Debt's great. Debt's fine. This is good debt. You are investing. Investing. Dead bomb, dead bomb, you're a dead bomb. The best analogy for this is that I'm driving a bus and my family and friends are in the passenger seats telling me where to go, when to turn, when to speed up, to slow down, etc. I have a destination in mind that I'm trying to get there, but the noise on the bus is overwhelming and impacting my journey. While intentions may be pure, the passengers are infringing on my commute, which I want to be peaceful and purposeful. Doesn't seem like too much to ask to me. Jesus, take the I am near wit's end and want to pull over and tell everyone to de-board. Dissociation with my family and friends is not ideal, but it feels necessary. Can I get to my destination and be happy without people? Can we live a fulfilled life of love and service while isolating ourselves from our immediate network, family and friends? I wrangle with these questions. As well you should. These are tough questions and there's no easy answers. Do we need to be selfish to fulfill our calling? How do we decipher the best course of action and distinguish emotional response rather than reaction? Because family comes with expectations and requires accountability, and accountability is a burden. So, whose burdens and expectations should we bear on this journey? Whoa, that is an intense, intense question. Thank you, Danielle, so much for opening up, for encouraging us to have this question, have this discussion, and let's see if we can maybe figure something out. You know, I never really liked that song, Jesus Take the Wheel. Like, I, I get the sentiments behind it, right? Jesus, you know better than me. I need to stop following my will and follow yours. And that's exactly right. We want to follow Jesus as well, not our own. The thing that I don't really like about that song is that it implies that we can just kind of turn our will over to God. And we can't. One of the greatest mysteries of creation is that God bestowed on us free will. So we cannot give our will over to him in the sense that he's taking the wheel, that he's driving our actions. I like to think of God as a GPS. He's our GPS. We have him sitting there on our phone ready to go. It's a matter of turning on the GPS and listening. And there's all different types of people when it comes to GPSs, right? We all know maybe some old people who say, I don't use that GPS, that thing doesn't work, it can't, come on, it's fine, I got, I got my map. Well, those are the people who don't believe in God, right? They say, I'm not going to even turn on the GPS, I don't, even, I don't even care, I don't believe it, you're crazy. Then we have the people who turn on their GPS, but they turn off the voice. So they have the directions going, but they say, you know what, it's annoying to keep hearing that voice. So I'm going to drive when I know the way. But every time that I'm uncertain or I feel like asking for directions, I'm going to look at the GPS and see what it has to say. So these are the people who believe in God. They know that he has the answers, but they'd rather only follow him when it's convenient for them, right? So I'm just going to ask God, oh, help me out with this, right? I'm really struggling in this area. But when that's fixed or I move past that, I'm going to go my own way and do my own thing and stop looking at the GPS. But Danielle, it sounds like you are one of the precious 
precious few who have decided, you know what, I'm going to turn the voice of that GPS on. I'm going to crank the volume and try as hard as I can to listen to what God is telling me to do. That doesn't mean I always do it, right? I often, often go my own way. But I at least have that voice on and I'm trying to listen. I really am. This becomes so hard, though, when we have a bus full of people shouting at us, turn right, turn left, slow down, speed up, go, 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 crash, crash, crash. <laughs> shut up, all of you, shut up. I need to listen to my GPS. It's the only thing I trust all over the rest of you crazies. Jesus takes the so what do we do? What do we do when we have a bus full of people shouting at us, screaming at us, telling us what to do? How can we hear the GPS? How can we silence those voices so we can listen inside, internally, and upwards to God and saying, God, what is your plan for me? What do you ask of me? I feel this calling in my heart to go out into the world to help the people who are disenfranchised, the people who no one else seems to care for. I want to take care of them, but I have all these outside pressures, right? Family, friends telling me, you need to go back to school. You need a job first, right? They're telling you to stop being idealistic. Let's be realistic. Okay, gosh, that term, realistic. Be realistic, not idealistic. When does anyone sit back on their deathbed and look around and say, I'm about to die, but you know what? It's fine because I was always realistic. I always did the realistic thing. <laughs> No one's inspired by being realistic, right? I would think we would regret not being more idealistic and not following our dreams in our hearts and not listening to God's call, surely, right? We don't want to die and get to the pearly gates and have God say, well, you know, I gave you this plan. I put that in your heart. I put that longing there for a reason. But you did this. You listened to the other voices. Why? And what will we say? Pressure obligation, right? I felt like I had to. I didn't. I didn't feel like I had a way out or a choice. There's always a way out. There's always a choice. Our GPS, God is always there. It just takes for us to listen. But Danielle, back to your question, your conundrum, right? You say, I'm ready to listen to God. I'm ready to just quiet those voices, but I don't know how to do it. Maybe I need to just cut everyone off and say, you know what? I'm going my own way. I'm sorry. You guys are just hindering me. I'm making the cut. <laughs> Now, this is definitely an option. This is definitely something sometimes people have to do. They just say, I'm in a toxic environment. I'm in toxic relationships, and I have to cut those people off. I am cut. But before we rush into it, we want to make sure, are these relationships actually toxic? Do these people really understand what we're do they're doing to me? I think that so often in life, we are going through something internally, and no matter what we kind of say to the people around us, they don't get it. We maybe drop hints and say, you know, I just, I don't know, I'm trying to figure this out, I don't really want to go to college, and they're just like, bah, 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 go to college, go back to school, be responsible, do the, do the, do the realistic thing. So it gets to a point where we mentally have reached the point of ultimatum. We're ready to walk up to them and say, look. You need to cut the crap or I'm moving on with my life and I'm leaving you in the dust. Another one bites the dust. The problem is they have no idea our internal struggle. They have no idea that we're actually reaching that point of ultimatum. So Danielle, obviously I don't know the full situation or the, you know, the full scope of what's going on here, but what I would suggest to you is to ask yourself, do they really understand? what I'm going through, what they're doing to me. You might feel like they don't care because of the way that we've responded, but I have found in my life that sometimes when the conversations come up and I'm like, oh, you know, I don't, I just, I don't know, I don't think I should be, and they're like, go, go, go. It takes a time for you to set up, to sit them down and say, I wanna talk to you. Can you just listen until I'm done, okay? It's not a discussion, and this is coming from a place of love, and I understand that you want what's best for me, so I just want to kind of just spill my guts here. Can you listen? When you say that to someone, whether it's a parent, sibling, friend, they should listen, right? If they're any kind of a good friend and you say, I need you to listen, they're going to listen, okay? If not, maybe you already you know what you need to do, right? Cut it. Cut it. So you sit them down and say, I need you to listen, and then you tell them fully. This is what I'm going through. Now, this is going to take huge vulnerability on your part, obviously, but it's going to be worth it, I think, in the end. So you tell them, 
I feel like God's calling me to do X, to leave the country, go traveling, do whatever it is. That's what I feel called to do. I understand and take your advice and I'm listening, but I need you to stop pressuring me. It's hurting me. It's breaking me. And this is the part where they might try to defend themselves, right? Oh, well, no, I just, and that's when you say, hey, remember you just, you, you said you'd listen, right? You please just let me keep going. And you, you explain, you just explain the whole situation. Start from day one. Ever since the day that I graduated high school, this is how I felt. This is how you've made me feel, whether on purpose or not. And I understand that you love me. Keep affirming that you know that they love you and that they care about you and they are doing what they think is best. And then just spell out that it's time for you to take over and for you to make the calls on what you think God is calling you to and what you think is best. And then when you get to that end point, you ask for their support. You explain it all and then say, are you willing to accept me as I am? Are you willing to support me no matter what decisions I make? And I mean that. Are you really, really willing to stick with me through thick and thin? And now it's the balls in their court, right? And they're saying, they're like, uh, uh, oh, of course, of course, or I don't, uh, blah, blah. They don't even necessarily have to respond right then, okay? Sometimes I feel like we blindside people. They have no idea it's coming. They think everything's fine. It's only we're like, I'm at a breaking point. So let them know you don't have to respond right now. We can talk about this again later after you've had time to kind of digest it. Um, but is there anything you want to say right now in response? Or you don't have to. You know, you can kind of leave the ball in their court. Let them decide if they just want to sit back and think if they have anything they want to say right then. But the point is, you've kind of given them the ultimatum without saying, I'm about ready to drop you from my life, right? We don't have to say that. If we say that to someone, huge walls are going to go up. They're going to get defensive, all this stuff. We're simply pouring out our hearts saying, this is how I've been feeling for a while now. I'm sorry I haven't really been able to get that across to you, but this is where I'm at. Are you willing to accept me wherever I go on the journey, right? Are you willing to? So now it's up to them to say, yes, I will stick with you or no. And then they're choosing to leave your life. Okay, they're choosing to leave your life. Now, it's easy to say yes, right? Of course they want to say yes. They want to feel like a good person. They want to keep you in their life. So they might say, yes, I'm totally willing, and then go back to their old ways. But now that we've had this conversation, and if we've gotten them to agree, now we can bring it up and say, hey, I know it's hard to break habits. Remember, we talked about this. This is what I'm doing. Can you please respect that? So we have to kind of retrain them, recreate those boundaries, right? Because when we're young, Boundaries with our family, with our friends are created by them often, right? Especially with family, with parents, they set the boundaries. There's a point where we have to redefine those boundaries, okay? We decide. So we're trying to retrain them really, re show them what the, our new boundaries are and create those boundaries. And you can even use that terminology if you think it's helpful in the conversation, right? I feel like my boundaries are haven't been respected. I feel like my boundaries haven't been respected and I know it's out of love, but I just want to re reestablish boundaries and create some. And one of those boundaries are it's becoming more stressful, more hurtful, more damaging to me when you tell me what you think I should do. Please tell me once and then drop it and wait for me to ask your advice. Wait for me to ask you for those answers, for what you think I should do. But it's just that we need to take that step back, create that boundary so that we feel comfortable asking for their opinion, and then we don't feel like we have to automatically do whatever they say. As to the question of, can we do this? Can we break off everyone? So let's say we give them this sort of ultimate and we say, are you willing to go with me? And they say no. Or maybe they say yes, but time and again, they've proven they're not. They're not willing to change. What do we do? Well, you may have to burn those bridges for the time being. You might have to tell them, so I just want you to know that it's going to be difficult for me to talk to you. So I may not be talking to you as much as we're normally used to. So again, you're not saying I'm never speaking to you again. You're just saying, you know what? You keep violating my trust and my boundaries. So now that for this friendship is going to shrink and start to diminish. Can we live a full and fulfilled life of love and service after we've cut off everyone around us? Of course, with God, anything is possible. However, there is a reason that he sent his disciples out two by two. We are, most of us, called to live in some type of community with others. 
However, that community can't be toxic. It must be supportive. So if you do find that you need to cut off everyone around you, or maybe not everyone, but a lot of them, you need to make sure that you focus on building up a new community again. Go to those around you. Look online. See if there's a group in your area that supports your beliefs, supports your causes. Places like here, right? How did, I mean, how did you find me, Danielle? Right? We can reach out to those around us, but it's so important that we find communities that we can be a part of. But everything else aside that I've said, no matter what happens or what route you go, much better than my advice to you or my perspectives is what you're going to hear from God in prayer, right? Turn on that GPS and crank it. Go to church. And I don't mean go to a church service. I mean walk into a church when no one's there and pray. Go to a Catholic church and pray in front of the blessed sacrament of our Lord. Jesus wants to speak to us, but like you said, we struggle to find the silence. So we have to seek it out, especially in today's day and age of noise. So I strongly suggest going to those places of quiet, going to a church, going out in nature, Right when there's no one around, build in those times, even if it's just 20 minutes a day, so that we can really pray. Maybe journal. I find a lot of people really find journaling to be helpful. Journal your thoughts. Journal. Start writing a letter to your loved ones, even if you're never going to send it. How, what would you say to them? What would you say to them if you didn't hold back? You know, if you just wanted to spill it all out, and then maybe you decide to show it to them or parts of it, or not at all. But I think that can definitely be a helpful option as well. Whose burdens and expectations should we be expected to carry on this journey that we call life? That answer is simple, but it's not easy. The only burdens and expectations we are asked to carry are the ones given to us by Jesus, by Yeshua the Christ. Those are the ones that he puts forth to us. What he calls us to and what he burdens with us with, his expectation of our actions. Just think, when I'm on my deathbed, am I going to say, you know what, I'm so happy that I pleased everyone around me? Or am I going to say, I'm so happy that I took a risk to please my Lord? But don't take my word for it. Read your scripture and pray. And listen to some of these people down in the comments below. They might have a little bit of an insight that I don't have. So everyone, leave your comments. Let me know if you think I'm way off base. You're giving bad advice. Remember, I'm no psychologist. I don't pretend to be some kind of, you know, studied or whatever know-it-all. I'm just a guy with a head and a heart giving you my thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, keep it simple, question everything, and stay radical.